Hello everybody and welcome to your next C++ Made Easy HD tutorial and this tutorial we're going to be learning about another container class called the map class and um, you'll be saying okay whatever the vectors was easy the stack was easy the map class should be easy as well well let's just say it should be pretty easy and it's pretty cool as well uh, this the map class gives you a lot more flexibility on um, on stuff that like the vector class in and, and stuff can't give you so let's start off the tutorial on um, by including the map class in the string class okay and to declare a map this is how we do it and it's kind of different so we call map okay so what we need first to put in is the identifier or the key type right so um and you'll understand what a key type is so right now I will put in a string right there and after we need to have um, the the values type so it's gonna be equal to okay and don't worry if that confuses you don't be afraid I'm gonna be explaining what all this means in just a second okay so this is the key name so whenever we create say an array or something like um, array or something oh let me so whenever we have an array of 10 or something, and uh, let's just say we, or let's make it a, a 2, so I don't have to type a lot. Okay, so let's say I have 2 and 5. Okay, um, so the key, in order to get this value 2 right over here, I know that it's stored in the, in temporary 0, right? I know it's stored inside there. Right, so the key and the key to getting this value right here is the number zero. Okay, and if I want to get the number five, the key to getting number five is number one. Okay, so when we specify our map class, we say that our key is a string type. Right, so instead, if we wanted, if, if map was just a regular array and we had two things in map. Then we would access it by saying map zero one on and so on and so forth. In this case, we're not specifying that. We're specifying that the identifier or the key is a string type, and the value we're storing in is an integer type. Okay. Now make make sure you get that. So the key or the identifier is a string. The value is an integer. So what does this mean? So before we even start. In order to, whenever we had a vector or stack or, or something like that, we call map.push or whatever, right? If you do this for, um, if you do this for maps and stuff like that, it doesn't work. And or, they don't have a push or a pop or anything like that. In order to add something to the map, it's as easy as saying map, putting in any key you want, just make sure it matches the same type as in here. So the key I'm going to put there is, um, I'm going to put test. And then we say it's equal to a value. Sorry, so we say it's equal to a value. And we put another one. So I'll say test2. So you go to 3. So on and so forth, right? And the reason why we can do it like this is because you can't, the map cannot contain two keys of an equal value, right? So the map doesn't have, so that's just how you allocate it. So you basically just set a key for it and then we set a value to the key, right? And I never tested it out to see if this actually worked, but I'm assuming that if we do like that and we put test in there like so, we can set a value to it like so, right? Anyways possible. Right, so it's just like um, we call a vector dot push or stack dot push or whatever, right? But the difference is that we are specifying what our identifier is and then our value. So then, how do we actually call this value? So if we do SEDC out, all we have to do is just put map test and then do that. So if we run this program, let's see what we get. We should get the value 2. And as we see, we get the value 2. So um, th this is just like an array. So when we had that, that temporary example, the identifier for, for
for the number two or the key for number two was the integer zero. This time we are creating our own identifier. So the compiler by default for arrays and vectors and stuff automatically puts an integer as the uh, the key type, right? And it increments it so on and so forth. For us, we are specifying what our key type is in here. And then we're specifying what the key name is. So now when we want to access it, we access it by the name that we give it to or whatever value we give it into in the brackets. So when we call map test, it says, okay, what's the value in map test? That value is two. Let us print that value to the screen. Okay. So for those of you who did not get it, because it's kind of different, it's kind of new. So for maps, you specify the key type, so the identifier type that's gonna be you're gonna be identifying it by, and what value you're gonna put into the different types, right? And if you guys have used C sharp or something like that, it's like equivalent to a dictionary in C sharp. Um, probably some differences. Yeah, there are some differences, but uh, they are, are are generally uh, the same concept, right? Uh, so what is this? Uh, I don't want to just explain this to you and I don't want to I don't want to explain to you and then not give you a reasoning for doing this Okay, so uh, let's say um, You have in your game you have a screen transition or or let's say that you have um, Let's say you have a weapon. Okay, for example, you have a weapon stored in your text file right now, let's say uh, weapon one does a certain amount of damage, weapon two does a certain amount of damage, so on and so forth, okay? So what we would do is this would represent the weapon name and this would represent the amount of damage. So in, if, I, if your player is equipped with weapon number two, right? Then all we'd have to do is go through the uh, the map, right? We just have to store all the weapons and their, 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 the amount of damage they do, right? So say for example, example we have weapon one and we have weapon two, okay? So weapon one does 100 damage, weapon two does 120 damage, okay? So if you have, say, you, um, say you're using weapon number two and you have that stored in a text file, you load which weapon you're using, then you find out so say say we have a string a string whatever and we call this weapon and it's called weapon 2 so we loaded this from the text file and this is the weapon that we're actually using then we can say map weapon so whenever we do damage or whatever so let me just put damage in there so we can so whenever we do damage, all we would have to do is based on our text file or whichever weapon they're holding, we can get the correct value. So instead of having to go through a loop and then trying to find out uh, which value it's in or whatever, we can just parse through it and easily find the correct value that we need. So if we run this right here, we should get the value 120. And we do get the value 120. So with the map class, um, there's a lot of stuff to do with the map class, but essentially everything is the same as the other container classes. The only other difference is that the way you allocate something to it. So this is not to be, this is not to replace regular arrays or something, but it is used if you have, um, if if you want to allocate your memory or something, if you want to know what key you're actually using. Uh, so I'm gonna end this tutorial here. Um, and I hope you look I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Hope you look forward to the next one Don't forget to comment rate and subscribe and uh, Don't forget to sign up on my website and post a question on my forum if you need to so that's it for now Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and